Biohazard warning. Entering contaminated zone. Transmissions jammed. Proximity coverage only. Backup activated. System rebooted. What's happening, nation? This is your boy Sly back again with some of that division love for you. And this time around, I want to talk about challenge mode. So, once you hit level 30, you uncover end game activities. Daily missions start to appear on the map and along with their completion rewards. Now, there are three of them per day. Two out of the three are simply missions you have to complete on hard, but one of them opens up another beast entirely, and that is challenge mode. Just about 90% of the enemies inside challenge modes are elites, ultras, you know, whatever you want to call those yellow bar enemies in the game. Now, they are two levels above you, their shields are buffed, and the damage they deal is absolutely insane. You will go down, and it will happen a lot, but being prepared for these missions is critical. Communications and tactic are the only way you're going to pull through, and when you do, the game's best gear is waiting for you on the other side. Now, I've completed a lot of challenges so far, and even though they usually take a little bit of time to complete, the gear you receive and the banking up of Phoenix credits help you not only in the next challenge ahead, but the dark zone as well. So let's talk about what I've learned and experienced in these kill fests and how you could pass this along to your teammates and come out of the other side just a little more OP. So first off, before you go and kill all these yellow bar enemies and the named boss at the end, check out this video I made a few days ago about the character trait called scavenging. So scavenging is basically this character ability that quietly sits in the background and it determines how much, what kind, and which rarity group will drop upon beating an enemy or the named boss. The video talks about how you can monitor that perk in easy ways you can increase the odds for more and better loot. So since yellow bar enemies and named bosses drop you the best stuff, you might as well try and get that as high as possible before blasting your way through this crazy mission. So alright, let's get on with what you need to know. First up, like most team-based games, finding patient friends who can work as a team is very helpful. You know, I've completed a few in matchmaking, and they took twice as long. But if that's your only option, don't worry, it is totally possible. So, once everyone is at the start, ready to begin, you guys need to communicate on who is going to run what signature skill. I recommend two agents to run the tactical link for the much needed and very useful damage buff. One to run recovery for those trick revives or times when you're being pushed and need health ASAP, and then one survivor link to be used in conjunction with other skills in order to shut down those powerful enemies as soon as possible. Now once the signature skills are decided, move on into individual skills. Now this can be up to the individual, but I will go over which ones I think help the most, and this is the same setup my team used with great success. So with the disclaimer out of the way, let's go ahead and set it up. One thing you're going to need to face, guys, is death. It's going to happen a lot, and healing grenades, they just don't come back fast enough to be able to help you. So every agent on my team sets up with a healing support station. We usually run three that can revive, and one with the skill and ammo perk. You use so much ammo trying to bust these enemy shields that it is insane. You can easily go through six clips per enemy per agent, and that's like the lowest. You know, those juggernaut-like machine gunners will sometimes take all your ammo in before dying. So, if you find yourself not going down that much at the beginning, just go ahead and switch it out. Run two healing support stations with ammo and skill recovery, and then two for revives just in case. Use these skills every time that they are available. Don't worry about wasting it, because your buddies will have theirs next if you don't. You will see that support stations are pretty much what allows you to hang in there to fight. They're awesome. Don't be afraid to use them, just simply cover the floor from start to finish, the entire mission. Alright guys, so let's go ahead and talk about the second talent. Now there are a few that I can knock off right away, and that pretty much means don't use these. The first up is the Seeker Mine, and it's kind of unfortunate because I love the Seeker. But at this level, the AIs are sharpshooting genius assholes. As soon as you throw the Seeker out, they're either going to shoot it immediately, or hack it, and then send it right back to you. It actually happened so much when I used it, I realized I was just helping the enemies destroy my team. So that's a no-go. Now the Flashbang Seeker, it can be used, but only when one or two enemies are left and behind cover. The problem is that you should have been using a skill the entire time, so waiting until the last few enemies have, are left is a waste of a skill slot. Next up is the Ballistic Shield. Now that's a definite no because these AIs are bullet sponges to the extreme. The shield might keep you safe a few extra seconds, but it will get destroyed by their gunfire and your sidearm is absolutely nothing to them. Besides, this is all about a team effort. How you can help your team and how your team can help you. Having an agent only worry about themselves is a definite setup for failure. 
Now for my recommended talents. First up, which is my personal favorite, the Sticky Bomb, but for its use as a flashbang, not for actual damage. Explosives do very little damage to them in challenge mode, and I believe it actually tickles them. I heard one guy laugh one time. But <laughs> grenades are useful for the effect of getting them out of cover, or for making them stand in place for a bit so your team can then shoot them all at once, but your explosives basically do nothing. However, the sticky bomb with the blinding mod on it is very, very useful. You will quickly find out that shotguns will one-shot you at pretty great lengths and those human tank machine gunners will mow you down in seconds. The sticky bomb stops them from rushing and shooting, giving your team a clear shot at an open target for a quite a good amount of time. Or you can use it in an emergency situation and blind them and run for cover because they rush you a lot in challenge mode. So for me, the sticky bomb blinding all the way. My next recommended skill is the turret. Now like the Seeker, they don't do a lot of damage. However, the Dragon's Breath mod weakens the armor and it will take the attention away from your team for a small amount of time, allowing you to then heal or team shoot an enemy. So if you do use the turret, I recommend the fire. But if you use it just for a distraction, then it doesn't really matter which one you choose. Next up, Mobile Cover. Now, it's an odd perk, but very useful. You get a damage increase to the enemies and a damage decrease for yourself, which is always a great thing. But not only that, a few of these story missions have very narrow hallways that you have to fight in, or only one door that leads in and out. Using Mobile Cover to block the path is great for those heavy gunners. Now, they do jump over it, but it stops the straight-on rush, giving you a chance to put them down. Also, I've heard about smart cover talent being shot into the mobile cover, but personally I haven't used it so I can't tell you how effective it is. But the damage does stack from both of those perks, so it might be something to look into. But yeah, those skills are the ones I recommend using. You just see how effective those flashbangs are when the time comes. It literally will save you countless amount of times. Last but not least, let's talk about consumables. Everyone always forgets about those things, but they do make a huge difference. So do you remember those water bottles that you're always giving out or finding around the city? Well, consuming those actually gives you a 20% damage increase to yellow bar enemies. It stacks with other skills used at the same time, and you can definitely notice a huge difference when your team all takes one at the same time. The other consumables that are very handy to use are the explosive rounds and the incendiary rounds. I actually use the incendiary first because it weakens enemy armor allowing you to kill them faster and once it catches them on fire they stop shooting at you giving you time to take a break, heal, shoot, whatever. It is a lifesaver. Once you're out of incendiary, use explosive rounds. Now once you equip it, it gives you an entire clip and it has a cooldown so make sure you use it as soon as you put it on. So that pretty much sums up the abilities and skills to use that when used in the right way will no doubt drastically improve your chances in a challenge mode mission. But the biggest thing that will get you through it are those people standing to the left and right of you. Your teammates are your greatest asset and communicating with them will get you through it every time. Sometimes it's necessary for the whole team to die so you know what you're facing. Callouts are essential. Always shoot the biggest threat first. Rushing shotgunners are the worst. They run in and one shot you and it's always in groups of two. Usually two groups of two. So when you see shotgunners, call out your signature skill when it's active. Flashbangs to stop them. Shoot, team shoot as much as possible and follow up the blindness with another flashbang or a grenade. Stopping the rush and picking off the most threatening opponent is the best approach every single time. Now once you can safely sit behind cover, all you need is time and before too long you've picked them all off. I've completed about 6 challenges so far and 2 of them have rewarded me greatly and the gear you obtain from these challenges will help you out in the dark zone a bunch. You will also notice that those enemies in the DZ are now currently nothing compared to what you just faced. It is great practice. But that's it guys, hope this little guide helps you on what to do, which skills to equip and what you can do to get through these things. Weapons are a personal preference and each mission will require a different one. For instance, Lincoln Subway Tunnel was either close up in your face or very long range, so I went with the AUG and the M1A. And then another example like Lexington Event Center is all close to medium distance, so I went with my Caduceus and the Vector. Whatever does the most damage is what you want to use, of course, but remember, don't only use the strongest attachments to get your DPS through the roof, but then have a gun that fires straight at the sky with the first trigger pull. A lower damage gun that is stable and can land every bullet will beat out a super high DPS weapon that misses its target half the time.
But that's it, guys. Hope you enjoyed it. If you have any questions, feel free to hit me up, and I will definitely get back with you. The link for the video I mentioned at the beginning is in the description box below if you didn't click the link when I mentioned it. So definitely check that out and get your scavenging up. It makes a huge difference loot-wise. Also, one last thing before I go, and I promise this is the last. <laughs> You've seen videos on YouTube about staying in elevators, and then they can't shoot you. Well, I'm pretty sure that it's now patched. Elevators are pretty much a death box now. Only use it if you need to escape. Run in, hit the button, go up or down, and close the doors so you can heal up and then go back and get your friends. But don't retreat back thinking you can shoot out of them like you used to be able to. I tried it recently, and I can promise you that it definitely doesn't work anymore. Alright y'all, so thank you for watching. If this is your first time, then you, my friend, are freaking awesome. And thank all of you for stopping by. By the way, we are always looking for more passionate gamers to join the nation, so hope to see you here for the long haul. If you want to stay up to date on everything The Division, Destiny, or the most recent uploads and random weirdness from Sly Nation, Twitter is the best place to do so. Follow that asshole at Sly Nation, or you can subscribe here on YouTube and keep in touch that way. That's it for me, y'all. Have fun in the DZ. Hope you get that sweet, sweet, delicious drop. And until next time, this is your boy Sly. Done. Gone. Out. Zone B secure.